All right, chip of the day. So the chip of the day is going to be a 68HC11, so the 6811, uh, very popular uh, microcontroller. Uh, so we're talking about microcontrollers. Yesterday I did a video about what's the difference between a micro microprocessor and a microcontroller. And this one is a microcontroller, but it's a bit special because it can be used as a microprocessor as well, depending on which one you buy. So there's a bunch of them you can get. Um, so uh, this was uh, a Motorola part, and uh, it was... Before we talk about the part, let's look at the uh, Wikipedia here, 1984. So it's a pretty early part, and it was one of the first microcontrollers. Intel had done the 8051 series, but they weren't, they didn't have everything in them. They had a couple things, but the, this one had a whole bunch of stuff in it. Now this one was quite expensive, um, so you didn't see it used in a lot of things, but on the high end thing, when you could afford a nice, uh, device you could you could use one of these so they found them then found their way into um, automobiles and things like that so um, yeah it says it's an 8-bit microcontroller which it is but it is uh, a lot of 16-bit instructions inside so it's kind of moving to the 16 16 bit region um, now um, like I said there are different there are different versions of this let's see these are not going to tell me um so let's look at the block diagram big block diagram so here's the cpu um, now it's a microcontroller so it adds a bunch of things it adds a a, a, a scuzzy port um serial uh io uh, a spy port serial IO. It adds a timer um, and it adds a um, A to D converter. So it's an 8 bit, 8 bit wide input, 8 bit, uh, uh, 8 channel input, 8 bit A to D. Uh, the oscillator is built in. You just have to add a crystal, it's 5 volt part. Um, now, uh, you could buy this several ways. You could buy it without ROM and without EEPROM, and it just had a little bit of scratch pad RAM, but basically it turned it into a microprocessor. You had to add external RAM and external ROM to make it work. But it was also sold as uh, a ROM part, so it just had ROM in it, so you could, you could buy this and have the ROM programmed and you had your program inside it and made it in a real microcontroller. And you could also buy a version that had EEPROM. Uh, so it was available in those three different versions. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, this week about the uh, A0 part. That's the one I have. And the A0 part is the one that has no RAM, no ROM, no nothing. It's just a microprocessor. And then there was the A1, A8 that added the other things. Um, yeah, so it is a it is an interesting part. Um, it is pretty easy to use also. Uh, I'll show you a schematic, uh, but it didn't require a lot of parts to make it go. Uh, it had a very robust instruction set. Um, and so I don't know if you're familiar. Most people are just programming in high level languages now, but but you know this was meant to be programmed in um, in assembler and uh, where every single clock cycle counted and things like that. Um, and so these are the mnemonics, but these are the actual opcodes. These hexadecimal values are the ones the machine actually understands. So if you wanted to do, uh, if you wanted to add the, the accumulators together, you would give it a 1B and it would take those two accumulators and add them together. Um, if you wanted to take memory, go fetch memory, get the value out of memory, and then add it to the accumulator, you could do that with a, a 9, uh, 9B command, uh, followed by the address, uh, or a BB command, a BB command followed by a 2-byte address into RAM, and it would do that for you. You, you could have different uh, um, ways of addressing. You could do an immediate, which didn't re need any address. You could do a relative address, which is just plus or minus some bits uh, in, 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 in program space. Um, you could do external, or extended, I should say. This is extended, which is a whole 16-bit uh, uh, address. So lots of ways to do things. So typical microprocessor stuff. 
uh, adds, uh, branches, uh, compares, decrements, uh, jumps, loads, yeah, all kinds of your normal, normal stuff, okay? And then here's a cheat sheet. If you're running one of these, you could say, okay, uh, I know that I have uh, a, a, a two-bit hexadecimal value. The first digit and the second digit tells me what, what thing I had. Like we had BB, you get, went BB and you got here to add, add accumulator to A. So, um, yeah, so there you go. It is a pretty cool part. Let's take a look at a schematic. All right, uh, so here's the uh, HC11 and uh, it has its address coming out here and it has its, um, you say, well, wait a minute, there's no data, there's address and data. Well, the address and data are multiplexed together on this, on these eight lines. So the upper addresses come out normally, but the lower addresses and data are shared. So you need one latch to separate those two, a lot like a, a Intel type of product. And those come over here to a latch. Uh, this, is the, this is the latch right down here that separates the address and data and, and uh, it latches just just the address space here. And then the data can go other places. Uh, here's your ROM, here's your RAM, and that's basically really it. You just needed to add a latch, a lot like an Intel part. Just needed to add a latch, ROM and RAM, you're good to go. You did need to have some logic to separate uh, to do a, a memory mapping and things like that. This particular product used a, uh, a GAL uh, programmable logic array uh, to do that for them and so they separate everything out. A couple other interesting things here they added some ports, uh, external ports. So this these are just latches. So this is a, uh, a output latch and this is an input latch and again they just use something like a LS373 uh, or something like that to do to do latching. Okay so let's take a look at the board. All right, this is the board we're going to be playing with. Um, it has the uh, processor here, a lot of pins, right? So it's in a uh, kind of a surface map package, but it's on a socket. Uh, this is our RAM. Uh, this is our ROM. This is the gal that does the address decoding. Uh, this is our address latch right here. So basically, this is the whole computer just, just, just right here. The rest of it is just buffers and stuff for the other part of this, uh, of this product. And uh, yeah, looks pretty interesting. Over here is a um, uh, a voltage reference, uh, a, a real accurate voltage reference to be used with the ADD um, to give you better values. So yeah, there you go. So tomorrow we will learn what this plugs into and give it a go.